What's up guys, this is Barry Big Plums Fishing here, coming to you from Beverston in Kent, Checker Tree Fishery. It's a tiny little place tucked away in the middle of nowhere, mainly a carp fishery, but it does have a trout lake as well. A tiny little place, as I say, they've got the aeration unit, so I'll turn around there. The aeration unit is going, and that means that this lake is not frozen. It's the day after the uh, beast snow, which has hit the UK, so most of the fisheries are frozen, but Places of aeration, it does tend to really keep the flakes, uh, the lakes fishing well, you know. Um, so there is a little bit of ice there. It's a tiny little place. It's somewhere I want to come up on an easy days fishing. I want to pick up some easy rainbows. Generally going to be using lures this time of year. And the lure of choice, if I can just about show you, there we go. The mop fly. I've read a lot about this online. It's a little bit controversial. It's meant to be the when all else fails fly, guaranteed to catch fish. So I'm going to give it an hour and see if I can pick up some rainbows. See you in a bit. Right, okay, time for a change of tactic, folks. I can see that fly has got some lovely, lovely movement, but it's literally about an inch under the surface. It had a hard frost the last couple of days. That is simply not going to work at this time of year. I need to put my sink in line, and I think I will try it again. Come up to the deep side of the pond i'll show you a quick view of the lake when we get there but it's only a tiny little place anyway in, in honesty so you know keep moving roaming approach is always best Right dudes, been a little bit slow going so far, um, but as I said to my channel loads and loads of times now if you subscribe to me, I am a firm believer in depth of fish. What depth the fish are feeding at is actually more important a lot of the time than the fly you're using. If you're fishing too shallow, you're gonna go over the head, they're not gonna take your fly. It's all about finding the depth, and I always worry about the fly second once I know whereabouts the fish are. So, I'm on my deep sinking line, Still on the mop fly. The mop fly really wasn't sinking too well on the intermediate or on the floating line. So I'm hoping it's going to get down there and uh, replicate where I just got that pull with a long weight on my intermediate line. So let's set up the camera and see if I can get you guys a hook up 
on the deadly mop fly. <laughs> So there you have it guys, the infamous mop fly. I've tried three different lines, floating, intermediate and sinking and moved three times. Proof that there is no fly which is infallible. I know it's only a little slice, a little test, an hour is not enough to say indefinitely, but for me it has not worked as of yet. So I've gone on to something a bit more common for me. This is one of my best rainbow lures. It's by a guy called Martin Williams. It's got a tungsten red bead on the end and it's really, really flashy. In tweaks, I've caught rainbow trout in just about every lake I've fished over the last year on these lures. Uh, really, really effective. The marabou tail really moves. Um, absolutely amazing. Um, you know, sometimes you've got to go lures, you know. I quite like fishing the uh, dull backs and the hares ears as much as anyone, but in the middle of winter when it's freezing cold, the rainbows love to chase big scary things, and uh, that's certainly what this fly is. Let's tie this on and see if I can uh, get a fish where the mock fly had failed. in the floor. That took a while going. Right, that was an awful lot of work guys. Um, as you can see, that fish came on the hang. We've got a lovely little overwintered rainbow there. So let's let him go. Hey, and off he goes. Right, after so much grief to catch one fish, had to work for that. I think it's always time for a celebration coffee. Can't go wrong. This is fun with one hand. I've never tried filming myself out making coffee before. Trying to spill it and make sure that's on properly. Yeah, that do. Okay. Don't know about everyone else, but I always find it more satisfying to get one fish after trying several things and failing than turning up somewhere and going fish, 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 boom, 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 pull, pull, pull. When you're trying out something a little bit different so i came to this fishery today expecting it to be deep sinking lines and pulling fast lures you know um i mean let me just have a show you this fishery man i've got the whole place to myself look at that tiny tiny little place you know mainly a carp fishery if you want to come and cut your teeth and try you know uh, try some stuff out and you know there's plenty of fish in there that's how I learned to fly fish I went to small places and I tried stuff out if you go to a big reservoir and try stuff out it's gonna be a lot harder to learn your craft you need to at least learn bits and pieces about what works like 
laws versus naturals. How is a trout raised? A trout is grown in the UK and it's called put and take. We grow them on and we stock them. So when they're in their little breeding pond, they're basically fed on little brown pellets. They've seen no natural food, they've seen pellets, you know, so they associate pellets with food. They then get chucked into a fishery somewhere and they don't know what a, a damselfly is or what a buzzer is when they first go in there. So when a fishery's just been stocked, that's when you normally see people turn up with their Larry laws and pull out all the stock fish. If a few of those fish get away and don't get caught, they soon move on to natural insects. They'd start feeding on buzzers and things like that. And that's when you get your better fish, it's fishing the natural fly. Uh, there's a great little place called Chaley Beat, which is uh, in Tunbridge, Wales. I fish there sometimes and you can only catch really using naturals there but it's one of the best buzzer waters I've ever ever fished um, you know you try I tried stripping a lure through there once got absolutely nothing but you know drifting the buzz around in the wind it is very very good fishing but the fish have been in there for a while they switch on to natural food so you know natural versus lures it depends what you want if you're happy going somewhere and getting your one to three pound stocky cool you know that's absolutely fine there's a couple of fisheries i won't name and shame them here but they stock their water so fully that that's the way you catch fish there me i always get way more satisfaction buzzer fishing dry fly fishing i know you haven't seen a lot of that on my channel so far but give it another couple of weeks when it warms up just a little bit and i'll start doing some dry flies and natural fishing for you and showing you how i love to fish but um at the moment when it's freezing cold you know the fish are chasing stuff so that's what I'm going to continue to do until I get my next fish anyway then I'll try and get you one on natural okay guys I've changed my tactics a little bit I've gone with a washing line setup so on the point I've got a candy fab which is a floating uh, fab so that's there first dropper we have a hair's ear second dropper we have a cormorant and then onto the floating line. So let's try that out and see what happens. Right, I've had the one, but I haven't had any pulls or anything on naturals and on lures for about an hour now. So I'm moving from the deep part of the lake and I'm coming round to the shallow part of the lake and just see if the issue I've got here is the depth that I'm fishing at. As I've said multiple times, I'm a great believer in depth is more important than anything else than fly fishing. So let's go up the shallow part and see if I can get myself another fish or two.
okay guys so got three flies on two naturals and a candy blob the candy blob to bring them in and hopefully they take the naturals however this little fella decided to take the candy fab so let's let him go and off he goes wonderful I must be absolutely mental. I am drenched. Right guys, it's been raining pretty much constantly since I've been here at Checker Tree today. Not the nicest day for fishing, but uh, I've been snowed in for a few days. I needed to get out there on the water. I was a little bit surprised that I didn't get any fish on that mop fly. I thought I was really, really gonna kind of bag up with that. Uh, I think I'm struggling still to find the depth a little bit. I did get another second trout, as you saw, on a team of flies, although they didn't take the natural, they took the candy fab. Um, I've run out of battery on my phone, so uh, I think that'd be it for the video. A couple of fish. Uh, not the best session I've had at Checker Tree, but at least I haven't capped in Blanco. That's the main thing. Um, if I had more battery, I would probably show you some naturals here and try and catch some fish properly. But uh, that's it. My camera's about to die. And uh, this is Barry Big Plums coming to you from Beverston, Checker Tree Trout Fishery. See you later.